Okay, so we've got our mask from Gradients group, but before we go further with that, check this out. You can take a UV map and RGB curves and do this, and the output exactly matches what you make with the RGB curves node. So this is a really quick and easy way to sort of draw with RGB curves in a way that matches up exactly. So this is nice for making convenient gradient shapes, like for brightening a certain area of the eye or maybe a fake lid shadow or whatever. You can do it with object coordinates too, of course, but you have to use Z instead of Y, and it's not quite in the right space. So you'll need to go and move it over on X and Z. But since we already do this conversion as part of our uh, object to UV group, we'll just use that and save ourselves the trouble. I plug the right thing in. So between the mask from gradients group and this method, we have everything we need to set up the eye area masks group from our main file. And if you look here, it looks like there's a lot going on, but what it is is it's two masks from gradient, one for the iris and one for the pupil based off spherical textures. And then it is three instances of using this RGB curves method for a fake lid shadow, a uh, crescent that lightens the lower iris, and for doing this gradient on the pupil color to brighten it towards the center. And everything else here is just a bunch of mixed mix nodes and node inputs. So I'm going to go ahead and start building this group in our new file, and this is going to be a lot of making and plugging in nodes and inputs, so I'll mostly be fast forwarding through this. Our basic setup with a exhaustive amount of labeling everything, but that always pays off in the long run when you're trying to remember what does what as we add more to the group. Now let's actually get these configured in a decent way because we haven't really set up the sizes of these different masks. So I want to match these as closely as I can to the actual objects we're using. And let's try to get some values that will match that pretty closely. I'm going to change some of these colors so I can actually see what I'm doing. Yeah. Deciding how thick and thin I want things to be and how much feather. And this is, of course, all totally up to you of what values you want to use at this point for how you want your eye to look. And part of the problem here is you can't really scrub it in small enough amounts.
So you kind of hunt around a little bit there. That's close enough. And for the pupil. Now I'm thinking I should have put some multiplies in somewhere to to make these values, you know, a tenth of what they are to make them a bit easier to work with. Uh, maybe we'll do that later now that I've thought of it. But that should do for our basic setup. I'm leaving these things as different colors just so we can see what's what easily enough. Maybe we'll go a little bit thicker on the pupil outline. Now we can see about adding some effects to this using our RGB curves. The first one I want to add is a fake lid shadow. This is going to be using UVs, uh, the mirrored UVs, because it doesn't actually have to move. And I guess we should do a quick check that these are all moving with the right objects. And that's all correct. So we're going to ourselves a multiply here. First let's make the mask. So this will just be darkening the upper part of the eye. And we can use our handy mask group here. Because this will let us actually control how much of the wrapped gradient to use, which is useful if you want to adjust the position. So, for example, if you're going to have an effect where you want to change how much, uh, how much space this fake lid shadow takes up as the eyelid uh, closes, if you could use a driver to control the position on this mask to adjust it. Using a driver to change the RGB, RGB curve is actually annoying because there's not really anything specific to drive. If you drive the FAC, it's going to give you the wrong motion. So it's better to have your initial gradient be the largest size you need and then use a driver on this group to adjust how much of it actually gets used. So we can... Multiply that over. I will probably want a pretty weak vac. And this is just a darkening effect on the entire eye and texture. This is a good place for using some of this feather. Line feather and offset don't matter because we're not using them. And this can control the original amount. And then this could be driven to adjust the degree of it. Make it a bit softer. We'll probably come back and tweak the exact shape of this color ramp, uh, of this RGB curve later. Or, you know, when you put these eyes on your character, you then need to adjust this to be appropriate for the geometry. You might need a different shape on each side, depending on the shape of your character's eyes or... Um, if it's more of an almond or circle shape, or, you know. For now, we'll have it just hit this upper area. And we'll make that fac an input. Make it a, just a 0.5 for now. Okay, I labeled and tidied those nodes up a bit. Now we can make our next RGB curve effect, which is going to be a lightning effect at the bottom of only the iris color. So for that, we're going to have it be based off of the iris textures, off the iris object texture. So let's get...
the UV. Oh, and if you didn't see this in the time lapse, I have learned since my previous video that you can get rid of these um, multi factor input by using the hide value checkbox. So thank you to whoever commented and mentioned that. Assume they added that at some point that I missed. I don't think that existed a few versions ago. So for this one, let's plug this into the output. We're going to get a slightly different shape from before because we want to isolate just this area. Try to keep these at the same height. I'm not going to make this all exact or symmetrical right now because it doesn't really matter at the moment. Give it a bit more feather this time. And this will be a uh, lightning effect on the iris texture. That's this one, so we need to move this and open up some more space. Take a look at that. And we'll use a screen node. That gives us a lightning effect. Let's make it a little bit bigger, maybe. Go. And that, of course, is also going to be an input. I'll keep it pretty weak for now. Do my best not to have too many noodles crossing over each other, although there's only so much you can do about that. Okay, and the last thing we're going to put in here is a gradient on that pupil color. Pupils are normally black, so I want to keep it pretty dark and have just a little bit of that color coming through in the middle. So we're going to get ourselves a new spherical gradient there that matches the pupil. And we're not going to use this one because it's hard edged. We're just going to go ahead and grab a copy of that group since it already has most of the correct settings. And this time we'll give it a bunch of mass feather and we need to give it enough size to use that. And there we go. That'll look about right. We can tweak that in a second. And oh boy, we're getting our wires all across now. It doesn't really matter. This will be a multiply instead of a screen. Multiply and screen are basically the same thing, but for lightning and darkening, although screen can get weird if you have a value above one. But we don't need to worry about that. And that will go on the pupil color and simply be this mask. Now we can see it's darkening based on this gradient, so I could adjust that with the uh, mass feather here. Let's take that out a little bit. But I want to alter it even more, I think. So let's get some RGB curves. In the original setup that I put out, I did this a different, less efficient way, but I think this is a better way to handle it. Let's see what that looks like if we play with that a bit.
this is the nice thing about this group is we can't just mess around with these sliders to see what what we get and if I decided let's see in my original file I let it go pretty bright but if we wanted to have even more control of it we of course have the factor here and we're gonna make that a group input as well Just making our input nodes quite large now And now I will clean up this group again. Well, that's getting pretty spider webby, but that's why I've labeled everything so much. And of course, you can use whatever organizational setup you find easy to keep track of visually, but this will do the job for now. And that is actually our group setup done. So let's review what we've got. We now have inputs to change a bunch of the common things that we're likely to want to change. Yeah, that won't take a bit to white. Well, so we have our white iris pupil colors. We have our outline colors. And, of course, these can be used for all sorts of different things. In some places we use mixes, and in some multiplies we have a few overall gradient effects that we can conveniently control. And then we have more things we can control inside the group. And depending on your setup and depending how much you're reusing this across different characters, you can expose a lot more of these inputs. That's why we bothered using... Uh, like this complex mass from gradient group that we spent nearly half an hour building last video, is so that you can have lots of parameters that you can expose. This setup is only really intended to be used on a single character, which is why we've put things in one group that you might want to have be very different on different characters. But the whole thing is designed to let you expose whatever parameters you need. So you could make this you know, one character and you kind of do things in one group, or you could expose a lot more parameters and have this work for other characters. You can add drivers, whatever. So that's all for this video. Let's take a look at our main file. So we've actually completed a large amount of this now, at least of the material. We've got our vector group, we've got our mask group, the shader, well, there's not really anything to talk about there. And what we have left is this stuff in the middle, which is the details of the actual textures. So as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff going on. We have some procedural textures and some image textures that go into creating what we actually visually see. But all of that is designed to plug into this area masks group that we've just set up. So we're actually through most of the complexity of this and most of the technical side. And the rest of it is basically just deciding how do we want our irises to actually look artistically and looking at how to build that. Thank you, as always, for watching, and remember, you can already get this full setup file either by signing up to my Patreon before the end of March or on Gumroad. So please help support me in making these videos and more in the future. Thanks, and I'll see you next video.